and this is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight, the most unpatriotic president ever. That is the focus of tonight's angle. Now, going into the 4th of July weekend, the most patriotic time of the year, but of course, it's really a miserable time for the left because they're embarrassed by our people and our history. Let's face it, they hate most of our past presidents, including Washington and Lincoln. Everyone on Mount Rushmore, they want them all ripped down. And the last thing they want to do is celebrate America's independence, because after all, they don't want America to be independent. So you think I'm exaggerating? Oh, this is just TV stuff? Well, I'm not. Think about who these people have become. Think about what they truly believe, how they feel about American history. Racism is real in America, and it has always been. Xenophobia is real in America, and always has been. Sexism, too. You should not be relying on a history filled with racism and sexism and homophobia to determine our fundamental rights today. Original sin of slavery weaved white supremacy into our founding documents and principles. What a horrible person. And how do these people feel about the actual people who live here? The top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists. I want to understand white rage, and I'm white. White supremacy is a poison. It's a poison <laughs> running through our, it really is. Running through our body politic. And it's been allowed to fester and grow right in front of our eyes. He's talking about half the country right there. Now, how do they feel about our being an independent country? The foundation of a rules-based international order built out of the wreckage of two wars, world wars. Violations of a core tenet of the rules-based international order. One of our defining missions is to strengthen the international rules-based order. Oh, my God. Okay, let me define rules-based international order for you. They're vague rules that exist only to restrain and weaken the United States and then empower countries that enjoy free riding off of us, or China. They, the rules never, never apply to China, which would never dream of doing anything against its own self-interest. Forget about it. Now, remember, the Biden administration doesn't go overseas to defend American interests. Oh, no. They engage in multilateral talks to advance global interests. American interests don't even come second or third in Biden world. Why should we be trusted to make our own policies or even, frankly, even choose our own leaders? We should have to live under international norms drafted by bureaucrats in Europe. The EU, they should run our domestic policy, our climate agenda, our foreign policy, and of course, they should decide all hot button cultural issues. And we know what they think. It clearly, it has massive impacts uh, on people's uh, thinking ar around the world. It's a very important decision. I've got to tell you, I think it's a big step backwards. I think it's a big step backwards. Of course, Biden, rather than stand up for our Constitution and defend our system, even when he disagrees with some court rulings, he piled on. America's better positioned to lead the world than we ever have been. The one thing that has been destabilizing is the outrageous behavior of the Supreme Court of the United States on overruling not only Roe v. Wade, but essentially challenging the right to privacy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm confused. I thought that the one thing destabilizing the world was President Putin in Ukraine. Now, of course, Biden never talks about President Xi's forced enslavement of millions of Chinese or the extermination of God knows how many dissidents in China. Biden never speaks about how destabilizing it is when China threatens Taiwan. Nah, it's potatoes, small potatoes. Instead, we saw Joe Biden standing in Madrid telling the world that what is truly destabilizing is that some women in states like Mississippi can't get more abortions. Talk about outrageous behavior. It's beyond unpatriotic. It's disgusting. But for him, Placating the far left by trashing America abroad is far more important than standing up for the American people in front of the sneering Euro elites who are being guarded, by the way, by soldiers from the same country that they despise. We know this by the fact that they're scrambling to do everything they can to reverse our independence. 
They think our health policy should be made by the WHO. They think our trade policy should be made by the WTO. That our foreign policy, as I said, should be shaped by the Europeans. And Xi over there in Hong Kong doing a victory lap. And these European fools are complaining about the fact that Americans in all 50 states get to vote on abortion? Okay, well, send me a memo the next time that Boris and Emmanuel lecture President Xi about the lack of fundamental rights over there. Don't hold your breath. In fact, this was Boris Johnson today. I was up early and I decided to watch him live at his press conference after the G7. He was asked if the UK needs to re examine its relationship with China. Now, notice the equivocation. It's very important that we uh, remember that we have to. Uh, we have a huge economic relationship with China. So does every, every country around that table. You know, it is very, very important that we understand that China is a, is a, a great country. It's going to be a gigantic fact of uh, the world's economy for a long time to come. So you need to, there, there has to be a, a balanced approach. A balanced approach, but no step backwards in China, I guess, only in the United States. That's real courage, Bojo. Of course, what Biden should have been doing in Europe is standing up for America not some vague notion of a rules-based international order. It's simply staggering to think that when we face the most dangerous situation in modern times, right now, the U.S. is basically using virtually all of its military efforts to prop up Europe while conceding the rest of the world to China. And Biden reassured the world, not Americans, that there is no end to the amount of money and weapons that we're going to be sending to Ukraine. How long is it fair to expect American drivers and drivers around the world to pay that premium for this war? As long as it takes. So Russia cannot, in fact, defeat Ukraine and move beyond Ukraine. Wait a second. Doesn't that all sound familiar? Well, the media, of course, missed the boat here. We're, we're more united than ever. And with the addition of Finland and Sweden, we'll be stronger than ever. We're going to increase the NATO border by 800 miles along the Finnish-Russian border. No, NATO is not getting stronger. America is getting weaker, though. And congrats, Joe. By agreeing, agreeing to NATO expansion, you've just made things more dangerous in Europe. Because Putin is now threatening to move nuclear weapons right to the border with Finland. So all this drama focused in one place, all this money, billions and billions diverted... It just gives China more running room everywhere else in the world. Tucker's been talking about what's happening in South America. It's happening in Africa. It's happening on our doorstep. It's time for Europe to step up and defend itself. We must insist on it. President Trump tried. We have to reorient our own priorities in a changing world. But instead, Biden chooses to drain our wealth in Europe while the leaders there hate us for everything we stand for. So this effectively means that we're abandoning the entire rest of the world to China, which, of course, is funding the war against Ukraine by buying Russian oil, oil and wheat. And remember that Biden's on the verge of dropping Trump's tariffs against China, even though we have now a near record trade deficit with them. So stay with me. This means that Biden has us indirectly funding the war in Ukraine, that we're trying to help Ukraine win. It's twisted, right? There is nothing patriotic about what Biden is doing in our foreign policy or with our energy policy, our trade policy, or at the border. All of it is designed to make America less independent, less prosperous, and yes, less happy. So happy Independence Day. We're going to celebrate this one and the one coming in the midterms and in 2024. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.